Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from howtodrawcomics.net and buttonbrostudios.com and welcome to today's very special How to Draw Comics live stream. In fact, this, I believe, is the first live stream episode that I've ever done for howtodrawcomics.net. Well, at least the, as I've labeled it, How to Draw Comics live stream. And the reason that I've decided to start doing these is because after last night's live stream session, I just feel like there was so much information that I was able to give just off the cuff to everybody who was watching. And from what the chat was letting me know right over here to the right, uh, it seemed like they were getting some value out of it. And so... I thought this would be a great way for me to get back into the game, get engaged with you, the How to Draw Comics audience, my fellow aspiring artists out there who are looking to level their comic art skill set up to the next degree and hopefully impart some of the experience that I've gained throughout the years, some of the things that I've learned through my own mistakes, through the obstacles that I've faced, the struggles that uh, you likely have shared with me uh, throughout your journey as an artist coming up in the game. Because it's something that we all go through. I know it feels like you're alone in this. Oftentimes, we're the only one sitting at our drawing table in our studio, and it can be a lonely place to be, and we sort of prefer it that way. We enjoy the peace and quiet and we're very happy just sitting there tinkering away working on an illustration that we've been dumping a whole lot of hours into but I think that the downside of that is it's very difficult to get any insight into what it is we're doing uh, nobody else is really there who can give us the lend us the eye of expertise to tell us whether or not we're on the right track, to direct us down the correct path so that we can increase our level of ability, so that we can see constant improvement and progress. Because we're going at it alone so often, I feel that we progress slower than we otherwise could. Of course, it is the dream to be able to work in a studio full of other talented, incredible artists. I mean, how amazing would that be to be able to learn from them, from your peers, people who are on levels far above you, who you can sit next to or ask to come and have a look at your work and get their feedback, figure out the ways in which you can really grow as an artist. And so I'm hoping that these live streams that I'm doing through the howtodrawcomics.net channel, we'll be able to give you a little piece of that, a semblance of that, even if it's just in the uh, in the insights and, and the advice that I have to give, even without looking at your work. Maybe I'm relating with you on something that you are facing right now, something that you're coming up against that you just can't get past. Maybe it's nothing more complicated than just the simple doubt so many of us experience. You know, we wonder whether or not comics is for us, especially when things just aren't working out, when progress is sluggish, slow, and it's lagging. It's like we've we've consumed so many courses at this point, watched all the tutorials that we can find, read all the books. Shouldn't we be experts at this point? Shouldn't we be able to draw at a high level of eliteness? I mean, what does it take to really be the artist that we've always dreamed of being, to draw the stuff that inspired us to get into comics in the first place? You know, we'd look at the work from artists like Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, David Finch, whoever your inspirations are, and we'd just gander at it in awe. We'd be taken back. It would fill us with excitement and energy and inspiration, this drive to push forward and to develop that level of skill for ourselves. This is something that is innate within every human being. We see something brilliant, something great, and we want to imitate it. But when we can't imitate it, when it's at such a high level beyond where we're at, 
it can feel somewhat hopeless. It can feel overwhelming. Like there's just so far to go before we're going to be able to get to that point. And so there's got to be within you a lot of fuel in the can, right? You've, you've got to be motivated, obsessed with getting to that level if you have any hope at all in actually making those dreams a reality. So I want to start off by saying a big hello to the chat, everyone that's jumping in here to join me today. It's great to see you. It's absolutely wonderful to have you here. Uh, I'm doing these streams for you, passing this knowledge on to you. So, I mean, you being here makes this whole thing that I'm doing worthwhile. It, it makes It gives this stream purpose. So I'm going to take a moment to personally say hello to each one of you lovely people. We've got Hockey in the chat, a wonderful artist who I've just seen improve in leaps and bounds, really taking his artwork up level after level throughout the, well, it feels like a short time that I've known him, but actually it's been quite a while. It's been probably a few years. And during that time, he's just never stopped. He's never stopped growing as an artist. He's jumped into my workshops before. He's watched plenty of the videos here on how to draw comics.net. And I'm not going to take the credit for his progress, of course, but uh, it's uh, he's, he's someone who is just looking for all the information that he can possibly find and absorb and then utilizing it, putting it into action, which, you know, someone like Hockey is an action taker. And that's why he sees those kind of results. So I think it's important to ask yourself whether or not you're a dabbler or an action taker yourself. He's someone that just watches videos passively, engages with courses in a, a way that uh, really isn't useful. You know, you're just, you're just watching it, maybe only a few lessons in it and you're completely forgetting about it. Or are you actually listening to every single word, taking it to heart and putting it into action so that you can see the results, the effects that it can have on your evolution as an artist. Now, hockey is somebody who does that. It's very clear to me. Uh, <laughs> he says he's already great. He's got a healthy ego about him too, which obviously all artists need. All right, we've got Blue Jay in the chat. Good to see you here. Thank you so much for joining. We have Jeremy Burtz. Hello. We have Frankly O Zero. G'day, everybody. He sounds like an Aussie. We have Rick. Hi, Rick. How are you? It's wonderful to have you here today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Paulus Art is in the arts is in the chat. Lots of great people here. Again, it's amazing to have you. Be sure to hit like. On the video, it helps get it out there in front of more people. So you'll be actually helping them if they're interested in growing as an artist. You'll be giving them that opportunity to gain a little bit more insight today. And of course, share the video for the very same reason. Share it on your social media. Let people know that it's happening, that they can jump in right now while it's live and ask me any questions they want. And I'll do my very best to answer them. My goodness, I'm about to sneeze. It's on the edge of my nose right now. It's making my eyes water. Ah, love those, uh, love those allergies. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up? How you doing? Good to see you there. Okay, so what I'm about to talk about with you today is related to the brand new character creator workshop that I've just launched on how to draw comics.net. You can find a link to it in the description below. If you like to draw incredible characters that leave a lasting impact, that excite and inspire, then this is something that's going to interest you. This is something that you're going to find useful and get value out of. So click the link in the description below to learn more. There's only seven spots left in this workshop, and I'm not sure when I'm going to run it again. So if you want to investigate a little bit and check out what it's all about, hit the link in the description below. You'll see an entire breakdown of exactly what's going to happen in each of the three days that we're going to catch up together in a live, interactive learning experience like no other. It's it's not the kind of learning experience that you're going to be able to find in a course or a book. 
It's one where we catch up. I show you my process, the exact same process that I use on a daily basis, whether I'm drawing my own illustrations, drawing an illustration for a client, whatever it is, I use this process because it gives me consistent success when it comes to drawing characters. I'm going to be teaching that to you. And then, and here's the best part, the most valuable part of this workshop, I'm going to be showing you as an individual artist how to implement it, how, to, how it works for you. And when you run into problems, when you have questions to ask, I'm going to be there to help you out. I'm not going to leave you stuck in the mud. I'm actually going to carry you through this so that the learning that you're getting from this workshop, you're actually able to utilize and see real results from a noticeable improvement on every day of this workshop. You're going to be taking something home with you. Day number one, we're talking about the fundamentals. You know the fundamentals at this point. This isn't really what this video is about. The fundamentals, they're all good and well. We're going to be giving you an in-depth overview on them. Proportions, anatomy, posing, construction, etc. And then we're going to get into the creative aspects of character design, where I'm going to show you my techniques, my methods for coming up with a memorable look for your character that stops people in their tracks, that stays with them and stands out from the crowd. Day number two is all about taking that character idea and constructing it from the ground up. We're going to lay down those foundations that we learn about on day one, pick a great looking pose for that character, one that's suitable and that, that expresses who they are, their personality. And then we're going to polish it up into a professional presentation with carefully weighted line work, details, rendering, if required. I'm going to show you how to create a professional comic book concept that you could easily use for your own comic book, for a portfolio to show to clients and get additional work coming in. Whatever it is, whatever it is that's driving you when it comes to being the very best comic book character artist that you possibly can be, this is going to help you get there. And I think that if it's something that sounds interesting to you at all, then you owe it to yourself to maybe look into this. And if you feel this is really something for you, invest in it. Don't wait. There's seven spots left. I can't promise you that they're going to be available by the end of the day. Previous workshops, they've sold out within just a few hours. We've already got people jumping into this. So if you'd like to be one of them, if you'd like to catch up with me, draw some characters together, get my personalized, tailored feedback for your work, then check this out. It's exactly for you. And then on the final day, and this is my favorite day, which is dedicated purely to you. So it's all about taking a look at what you've created the last two days in the workshop before that point, assessing exactly where you've arrived at, what can be improved upon, what you're doing right as well. It's also valuable to know and giving you the tools that you'll need in order to move forward, in order to continue onward be beyond the workshop, to diagnose the problems, to be able to spot them out before it's too late within the fundamental construction of your character so that you don't end up with doomed character drawings, so that you don't have to just tank the entire thing and throw it out. I'm going to show you how to catch those problems super early on and then uh, ultimately take them through to a polished finish. I'm going to point out all the different little nuanced areas that you might not have noticed that you could be working on to take your characters that little bit further. This is something that I do literally on a daily basis, <laughs> whether it's when, when it comes to critiquing my own work, which I do a heck of a lot, you know that I'm a big perfectionist, or whether it's working as an editor on a comic book project that I'm involved with, with, which I am right now. You know, I go the whole mile. I go over the top of the artist's work and I show them exactly what it is they need to do in order to upgrade it, in order to push it to the next level, which is what it's about. You know, whenever you think you've done your very best work on your character, realize that that could only be 50% of its full potential. I'll be right back just a moment. All 
right. Well, how's that for crazy? While I was selling you this character creator course, someone knocked on my door and was trying to sell me some kind of gadget to put in my electricity box outside. I had to tell him I was on a live call right now and that I needed to get back to it. Feel bad shutting the guy down like that. He looked like a really nice man, but what can I say? Anyway, that's the character creator workshop. Again, link is in the description below. Check it out. I think that you're going to love it and you can bet that there's a bunch of other workshops I've got planned in the future that uh, you're equally going to dig. So, oh, I'm going to take a breath here, have some coffee. Mm. Coffee addiction is kicking in again. Need a little something to pep me up for today's talk. I'm excited. All right, so um, today's topic, which again is related to character creation, of course, is all about going beyond the fundamentals. What do I mean by that? Well, what I've found with a lot of beginners and even intermediates is they get stuck practicing anatomy and proportions and figure drawing studies for eons. Okay, month after month, for years. They could literally be going for years, having all this knowledge and being able to execute it, okay, draw perfectly constructed figures, but never really using that knowledge in the context of what it, it was meant for, for what they originally wanted to do with it, was was probably to create a kick-ass looking comic book character and turn their story into a comic book. There's a very large jump from being able to draw a well-proportioned character with perfect anatomy to being able to tell a story about them. To create a character that looks alive, feels real and relatable, a character which is compelling, a character that has energy and vitality to it, Okay, these are the things that you completely miss out on when you focus purely on the fundamentals and stay stuck on them for too long. It's not all about the fundamentals. Really, you could easily learn the fundamentals in six months, 12 months max. You could get a really good, solid handle on them, depending on how dedicated you were to mastering the fundamentals. And by dedicated, I mean, ideally, you've got a decent amount of time. Maybe you've got a day job or you're going to uni and you don't have an abundance of time that you can commit to it. But maybe you come home and you spend three to four hours. That's half a day's work. You spend three to four hours after dinner just working on your anatomy, working on your fundamentals. I can guarantee you that if you dedicated a week to each and every component of these principles, you'd be able to master them within a very short amount of time. Say, for example, if you were practicing just arms for an entire week, arm anatomy, drawing it from different angles, posing it in different positions, it would be very difficult for you not to be able to draw an arm off by heart by the end of that week. Okay, you could fill sketchbooks up with arm studies, know them off by heart, and be very, very competent at drawing them with enough dedication, with enough focus. And it's very hard to focus in this day and age, isn't it? Because of the internet, because of all the distractions, we've got so much there to take our attention away from the things that really do matter, such as our craft. And so what I'd highly suggest is you resist that at all costs and really put your time invested into something that's going to give you a viable return. Okay, be on the path toward your uh, ideal outcome, whatever that is, and what is going to be more fulfilling than seeing through the full potential of your passions in life. Okay, to to explore just how far you can take them, how how good you can get. 
that's what we really wake up for in the morning. That's what gets us out of bed. That's what keeps us up late at night. Man, I'm telling you, there have been nights where the hours have just slipped away because I got so engrossed in a piece of art that I was working on or something that I was learning. And before I knew it, it was 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. And you know what? I got up early the next day. This is a regular thing for me when it comes to comic book art because I love it so much. You know, I think about all the stuff that I have the ability to create and how much of it I want to create within my lifetime. How much volume I want to have. Now, I want it to be good. I want it to be amazing. I want it to be epic because there's no point in creating it otherwise. If no one appreciate it, appreciates it, if you're giving a gift to the world that isn't significant, then why give it at all? And that's what drives me to continually try to improve, to give greater gifts to those out there who follow my work, who are inspired by it, who maybe have been compelled to pick up the pencil and pursue comic book art themselves. I love the idea of being able to invoke that level of passion within somebody else with my art. And who knows? I think that at some point you'll be able to do the very same thing. Okay, so we're talking about the fundamentals here and why they're important, make no mistake. If you're drawing a character, the proportions are whack, the anatomy is all over the shop, and the pose looks broken, then you've got some serious problems, okay? This is where the biggest mistakes are going to happen, the kind of mistakes that cause your character's irreparable damage, the mistakes that you can't come back from, okay? If you have a proportional blunder within your character, it doesn't matter how much you try to pretty it up with the details or what kind of design you give it, something's going to look off about it. And the only way to fix it, especially... Man, if it's affecting the entire structure of the character, I mean, you just got to throw it out and start again. Okay, so it's really essential that you catch proportional errors early on within the figure drawing stage. That's something that I harp on about within the character creator workshop. It's something that I impress onto anybody who's taking it because if you're not clued into that stuff, if your awareness isn't where it needs to be during those initial stages of the character construction process, you run a very high risk of ending up with a flawed character. Okay, now that's the opposite to what I want to give you. I want to give you the best chance of success possible and the tools to be able to ensure it. And so, yeah, fundamentals are really important. So is uh, so anatomy, proportions, and posing your characters, especially posing your characters, because that gets into what we are going to be delving in depth on within this live stream. But uh, I just want you to know that that's not all there is to it. That's just stage one, man. You know, people stay at stage one. They sit there, they stagnate there, and they wonder why they're not enjoying drawing anymore. It's because all you're doing is anatomy studies, and trying to polish up on your proportions that's not any that that's not fun that's fun maybe while you're learning it to an extent and seeing progress but once you're uh, pretty proficient at it you've got to move on and that can be scary because beyond the fundamentals beyond the basics which is what every course really teaches you about it you never get to see the advanced stuff like you're going to see in the character creation workshop there's there's no real established approach to it. It's very much left up to the individual artist to find their own way, or at least it has been up until this point. Okay, nobody's formulated the process of creativity, of bringing your character to life, and what goes into it. But I've had to help enough people at this point get their work to that place. Let me tell you something. Whenever somebody signs up for a mentoring session, this is one of the primary issues that they're having. They're pretty good already. They just don't know where to take their abilities next. They don't know what direction to go in after they've learned those fundamentals. And so 
That's what I help them to do. I come up with a game plan for them, something that they can follow and actually use all that knowledge for so that they can start having fun creating artwork again. You know, for such a long period of time, we're stuck in this analytical mindset, this logical mindset as artists, and we don't really ever get the opportunity. We don't give ourselves the opportunity, honestly, to tap back into those creative aspects of what makes drawing comics so fun in the first place. We forget about it somehow. We forget about all the awesome things we would have loved to have drawn when we were kids. Do you remember being a kid, looking at the artists that you admired the most and thinking, man, the things I would draw if I had their level of ability, if I had their superpower, Your imagination runs wild, but when was the last time it actually ran wild for you in recent times? It's difficult. We we lose it somehow, and I think it's because we we are lost in the forest. We we can't see the forest through the trees. We get stuck in thinking that we have to focus on the things that we believe will make our artwork work the things that we believe we should be doing, the right way of doing things, that we never really find ourselves, our true, unique identity as comic book artists. Now, I want to bring that out of you in the Character Creator Workshop, which, again, in case you missed it, is actually linked in the description below. You can click it right now to see what it's all about. But here are the 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 critical things that you need to think about in order to truly make your comic book characters work. Okay. The fundamentals, sure, they're great, but there's three other things you need. Otherwise the fundamentals don't really matter. It, you just end up with a diagrammatic, flat looking, lifeless, generic character that might be drawn perfectly, but doesn't leave an impression. It isn't noticed by anybody. It's boring to look at. Okay. So Here are the three critical things you need to consider. The first one that's coming to mind here, and I do have a list of them inside my head. I'm just trying to remember what order I was going to talk about them in. But the first one is the ability to express through your characters. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean the ability to express emotion, to convey who that character is, how they're feeling, what they're thinking how they're going to act moving forward, their temperament, the way in which they are going to interact with other characters and react to the situations in which they're placed in. How do you describe that? And you've got to describe it without words because a lot of the communication that you're going to pick up on between human beings, it's purely nonverbal. It's all through body language. It's all through facial expression. And so many comic book artists miss this. I'm telling you, their art looks beautiful, but their characters look like robots. They're stiff. Faces say nothing about what that character is feeling. The world could be ending around some of these characters that I've seen, and the character themselves looks completely unfazed, like they're just completely checked out of the situation. No joke. Ask yourself, are your characters doing that? Do your characters really look like they're acting the way in which they should within the context of the situation that's unfolding within your comic book? And if they are, are they doing it in a way that is exaggerated enough, a way in which has enough potency, or is it just subtle? Because when it comes to visual representation in the comic book medium, we want to push it a little bit further than we would in real life. We want to over-exaggerate things in order to up the impact of it. Now, a lot of these cues, these emotional cues that we give off as human beings are indeed subtle, okay? But they can also be very extreme. And oftentimes, the intensity of the emotion is going to lead to more extreme expression. Okay, Now, if you think about uh, the emotion of being slightly pissed off, for example, you might have a face like this with a slight glare, a little bit of a frown. You might tilt your head back and to the side, and you know you might have a, what looks to be a slightly pissed off face shul expression. 
But then what about if you're really angry? Then all of a sudden your face is going to contort and it's going to wrinkle up, right? And it's going to get more extreme. It's going to get scarier to look at, okay? You're going to make bigger gestures with your hands, with your body. But what about if you're feeling insecure and, you know, how are you going to hold yourself if you're feeling nervous and afraid? You know, you're not going to have a big stance at all. You're not going to be making big movements. You're going to be all closed up, cuddling yourself in a corner, right? What about if you're super sad though and you're crying? Uh, then all of a sudden your face, once again, more hardcore emotion is going to start to wrinkle up. It's going to contort and position itself into an expression that is much different to what your default static expression would otherwise be. Okay, now this translate, uh, translates over directly to our characters. It's something that we need to incorporate into them. Why? Because this is what allows us to be able to relate with our characters. Okay, this is, this is what tells the reader of your comic book what they should feel in any given situation that they observe the characters within throughout the story. Think about this. If you're at a funeral, for example, you act accordingly, you act within a certain way. You're not going to act strange or erratic. You're not going to be uh, throwing a party, for example. You're not going, well, depending on the culture that you come from, maybe you would, I don't know. But just as an example, right, right off the cuff here, uh, you're, there's going to be a certain mood and a certain way people act within that situation. Uh, at a work event, in, an, in a business meeting, people are going to act within a certain way. And oftentimes what you'll do is you'll look, at, you'll look at the way other people are acting in these situations in order to gauge how you should act, in order to give you clues as to how you should navigate that particular situation. Same thing happens when we're reading a comic book. We're looking at these characters and we're, we're relating with them on an emotional level. So we're, we're feeling things as we read this story. We're feeling for the characters. We're feeling something about them and whatever it is what they're going through. And a lot of that is taken from the way in which the character is conveying their own emotions, the, the visual cues of expression that they are giving off to us. And word balloons don't mean squat, okay? They can say one thing and essentially do another thing. And it doesn't, it, it's not going to matter. It's, it's, it's way too disconnected if you don't have the body language there to make sure everything is congruent. Okay, it's that congruency that matters most. Congruency with what the character is saying, with the situation that is unfolding, and with the other characters within that scene. Okay, if there's one character that's acting angry and erratic and crazy and looks scary, but then the other characters within that very same scene don't seem phased at all, as if that crazy erratic character isn't even there, then there's a problem. Okay, there's an incongruency, there's a glitch within the matrix at that point. And what happens then? The suspense of disbelief, the suspense of disbelief is broken. The reader is taken out of that story. Okay, so that's why the ability to express emotion through your characters, to tell the viewer who they are, what they're thinking, how they feel about themselves, how they feel about other people, how they are reacting to the situation that is unfolding within the story on an emotional level, and maybe even giving hints and predictions as to what they're going to do next or conduct themselves next in a particular situation, the ability to be able to do that is what is going to make your characters feel real and alive. Without it, they're going to be lifeless. They're going to be contrived. They're going to feel contrived as if they're just reptiles in human suits, right? 
So that's the first critical thing that I want to bring to your attention. In order to get good at it, you need to become an observer of body language. You need to become a people watcher. Okay, you need to study what angry people look like. You need to study what happy people look like. You need to ob observe and take notes on how someone appears when they're super excited or super sad. Because you need to be able to convey it through your characters to give your stories emotional gravitas. Okay. Number two. Let me check my notes here. I have short-term memory these days. I swear. I don't know what's going on. Let's have a look. Um, oh, okay. So... Here's the other one. This is super important. Okay, extremely, extremely important. This is what separates a complete amateur from a pro that doesn't ever stop progressing. I'm going to get to all your questions too, so leave them in the chat, by the way. I'm going to do a big live stream session here. I just want to get through this presentation because these are things that I think are going to make a real difference within your characters, especially if you start implementing them, like starting right now. Don't, don't ignore what it is I'm telling you. Take it to heart. Take the opportunity right now to advance your character creating skills because this stuff, this is the real stuff that you won't really, you're not going to hear it anywhere else. Okay. I'm extremely intrigued and fascinated by human psychology, nonverbal communication. Okay. I've studied it. I've watched it for, I've watched videos about it for pure enjoyment. I observe it in mo the best movies, in the best comic books, in the best animations, the, the kind of productions that pull a tear out of your eye by the end of it. It's so damn good at connecting with you. So take it on board and utilize it. Don't take it for granted. Okay. Too many people are taking this kind of information for granted these days. They're watching videos and then forgetting about it two seconds later. Take notes, write it down, implement it going to make a massive difference in your characters. People are going to notice, make no mistake. Okay, so here's the next thing. It's not about being perfect. You're never going to be perfect. But I'm not saying that in the way in which you think I'm saying that. I'm not meaning what it is you think I'm meaning right now. Mistakes are extremely important. Not only do you want to realize that perfection is an impossibility, you also want to accept the fact that not only are you going to make mistakes, you need mistakes to happen. Think of it this way. If you never experience any adversity throughout the journey that you go through to create a comic book illustration, to draw up a character, Chances are you haven't fully explored it on a level deep enough to discover the potential that it might have had, to discover the other areas in which you could have grown that idea, could have developed it. Creativity in and of itself isn't perfect. It's a, it's a work in progress, a constant evolution going beyond the things that work or don't work. It's an amalgamation of both of them. It's synergy. The only way in which I'm able to draw a successful comic book character is by using my mistakes to navigate 
my way to success. Without the mistakes, I'd have an extremely boring, generic, unexplored, unbrave comic book character. It'd suck. It wouldn't stand out. Think from now on of your character creation process like sculpting. Okay, you're starting out with something which is imperfect, with a lump. And slowly but surely, you're making micro decisions. Micro decisions, by the way, which I'm going to give you clarity on and reveal in the Character Creator Workshop, which I highly suggest. If that sounds interesting to you, if you'd like to know what they are, you sign up to it. Get in now. Last time I looked, there was only seven spots left. But micro decisions that slowly but surely form the finished product, create that perfect representation of your character by the end. But the only way to get to perfect is through imperfection. It's as if you're in a dark house that you're completely unfamiliar with, a mansion, and there's no light coming in whatsoever. The only way that you're going to find your way out is by bumping into enough walls that eventually you stumble your way to the front door and you emerge. That is what drawing characters is like for me and what it should be like for you if you are leaving no stone unturned when it comes to crafting them. Be a warrior. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. It's not about getting it right. Getting it right just means you're unadventurous. Okay, it just means you're not delving deep enough. You're not brave to explore the areas of your character that could lead to its greatest success. Try out different things. Experiment. See what happens. What is the worst that's going to happen? You have to throw it out and start it again. So what? Start it again. It'll probably be better next time. Ideally, you want to work out the primary underlying issues right off the bat during that foundational stage. But afterwards, when you're trying to sculpt out the shape of your character's design, it can go in any which way direction. Okay, see what your character looks like with big shoulder pads. See what your character looks like with little shoulder pads. See what they look like with crazy hair, straight hair, long hair, short hair. Mess around with the shape. Tweak it in slight little subtle ways just to see whether or not it looks good. How do you know what's going to work if you've never seen it before? How do you know it's a mistake if you haven't made it yet? This is why you've got to be daring. Embrace the mistakes. Learn from them. They are a gift from on high. Make those mistakes. But here's the kicker. Here's what you also need. You need the ability to be able to spot a mistake when it pops its head up. And you also need the ability to be able to resolve it. Now, the way in which I resolve many of my mistakes is I just try something different and maybe make them another mistake straight after the previous mistake. But you've got to be able to spot those mistakes. You've got to be able to see what's not working and you've got to be able to know what is working in order for this to lead to the best possible outcome for your character creations. How do you recognize those mistakes? Over time, through doing this exact same process that I'm describing here, and we'll delve into this in more detail in the workshop, but just on a surface level, you develop the eye you need for spotting the subtle mistakes 
and the areas that aren't quite working within your character creation just through repetition, just through experience. Now, you can talk to a pro who's been there before, who's made all the mistakes you've probably made and more, and you can learn from them what the micro mistakes are that they've made in the past so that you can avoid them for yourself. But again, is it really about avoiding them? Do you want to avoid avoid them? Maybe they would work for you in a way that led you to an outcome you might not have ever arrived at, a more desirable outcome. Okay, this is, again, some next level stuff that nobody ever thinks about, nobody ever teaches. But it is absolutely critical that you consider it and that you implement it into your workflow. Because if you don't, you're always going to have a glass ceiling over the top of your progress, of your ability to improve. Because there's going to be artists out there like me, who aren't afraid to make mistakes, who just keep on going, who just keep plowing ahead and end up with much more exciting output and character presentations because of it. This is why I've got my eraser out all the time. I look like a madman constantly redoing stuff, but it's because every time I redo something, it's, it's, like, a, it's like an iteration. It's like another generation of that particular portion of the drawing that I'm working on. And it gets better each and every time. It gets closer to what it is that it's supposed to be each and every time. Now, you can think of it as some kind of spiritual journey if you want. (laughs) You can can think that uh, the, the muse is communicating with you, and that's what's giving you that intuition, but it's not. It's just that you've been there before. You know what it is you want to see within your art. And you know what you don't want. You know what works for you. And that's the thing. That's why you can't learn it, really, from any course or book. Because a lot of the time, they're showing you a pre-recorded representation of the process that they were using at the time. And they very well could have grown beyond the point at which that course was initially released, beyond the point at which that book was put out. And who knows, they might only be able to draw great-looking anatomy and proportions. You don't know that they're actually in this, using those skills to create comic book characters that are cast in real, actual comic books, that they know how to animate them, that they know how to use them as actors within their stories. And in the end, it's all ultimately down to you. And so what you really need is a course, a learning program that is fashioned around you, one specifically made for you. And the closest thing I can give you to that is the Character Creator Workshop because it's live and it's interactive. What more could you ask for? I can give you advice and feedback that's tailored specifically to you. If you think that'd be valuable, then hit the link in the description below. It's going to take you straight to the Character Creator Workshop where you'll be able to see all the details broken down in detail as to what you're going to get out of it, what you can expect, what I'm promising you in that program, all within three days. Now, yeah, those days are intense and they're going to be long. But we are going to cover so much ground, more ground than you probably covered in years of trying to learn this stuff. And I'm going to reveal things that you've never seen in any course or book that is going to take you far and beyond where you would have been if you hadn't have taken that workshop. Now, many people are going to wait on this. They're going to let this opportunity pass them by. But the question I'd ask you is, is is if you do that, where are you going to be? Where's that going to leave you? Where are you going to be in a month from now or two? Are you going to be in the same place, still struggling to make progress? 
still doing courses, wondering why you aren't as good as you should be at this point after all that time invested in pre-recorded recordings? How valuable would it be to you? How much further ahead would you be if you had someone there who could look at your work right now, tell you exactly what's working and what's not working about it, and then give you the tools beyond that to actually move forward, to attend to those weak spots within your art, to reinforce them and make them the strongest aspects of your character creations in the entire composition. To upgrade and build upon the areas in which you're already doing well, to take them further forward, this is what true progress looks and feels like. It's, it's how you should feel after a learning experience like that. And I truly believe for that reason that these workshops are the future and the way ahead for online education. Now, I'm one of the few people that is actually doing this in the comic art arena, doing it to the depth that I'm prepared to do it to, to the extent that I'm willing to go with that I'm willing to delve into. You know, ask anyone who's taken my workshops in the past. I deliver above and beyond. <laughs> I make you stay longer than I actually promised just to ensure that you get it. And if you've ever seen my courses or my tutorials before, then you know what you can expect from this workshop. The only difference is beyond showing you my process real time, you'll be able to ask questions about the areas in which don't quite click for you, areas in which I will happily shed light on if needed, and I'll hold you by the hand to ensure you get it. You'll be able to ask me about all the areas in which you're having difficulty. I'm not going to leave you stuck when you get snagged, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to make sure that you get it. How many other opportunities do you get to do that? Well, you're going to get that opportunity when you hit the link in the description below and check out the Character Creator Workshop. And if it's something that you like, if you want to draw kick-ass comic book characters, then book into this workshop. Become a part of it. Let's draw some characters together and finally make it happen. Let's just take the leap today. We put this stuff off. We procrastinate on it. And why? How long is it really going to take you to get to where it is you want to be with your artwork? It took me ages. It took me a very long time. And I had to put a ton of work into it because there's no one there to show me in the way in which I'm offering you right now. It doesn't have to be that way for you. It doesn't have to be that way, the same way that it is for a majority of other artists out there. You can be different. You can shortcut your learning curve significantly today when you hit that link and you sign up to the Character Creator Workshop. All right, let's take a look at the comments here. We've probably got a lot to go through. I was doing a bit of rambling. Oh, I mean, the one, the one other thing, by the way, because I promise you three critical aspects of character creation that most people don't ever look into or get when it comes to this stuff, they don't look past the fundamentals. And that's exactly what it is I'm talking about here, which is that critical feedback, individualized, personalized, and tailored to you. Okay, so everything I just went over, right? This is what's going to make the difference between uh, you doing this on your own, trying to figure it out for yourself, and then having or having the clarity to be able to know exactly what it is you need to do in order to improve at the fastest rate possible. Okay, so that's the other aspect of it, getting the feedback you need, the specific feedback that's going to help you, not generic, you know, all with the same brush information that can be applied to anyone and anything, but stuff that's going to specifically help you out. Of course, it's not a necessity. You don't need it. It's not something you have to have. You can still progress. It's just you're going to progress a lot slower. So 
if you've got the opportunity there to have it right now, why not take it? What is it that you're waiting for? Don't be afraid. You, you really can make this happen for yourself. So if drawing comic books and being the best artist you possibly can be is important to you, then you, you owe this to yourself. You owe the character creator workshop to yourself to be a part of it. Let's take a look here. Appreciate all the comments, by the way, everyone. Thank you so much. It's, it's absolutely amazing to have you here. I'm going to start from the bottom. Uh, we've got Corey in the chat. He says, just buy the course already. So he ends this point. <laughs> uh, yes, I can harp on a little bit, can't I? All right. The art and time of J. Ryan. Procrastinate, you say. But what about crastinate? Is that a state of being before I become pro? <laughs> uh, that's That's funny. That's really funny right there. Um, yeah, no, procrastination is a really uh, big issue for many of us. And it's uh, something that I still suffer from till this day. But you know what I realized just recently is that it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter if you don't want to do it. It doesn't matter if you're not feeling up to the task today or whether or not you're in the mood. It doesn't matter how sleepy or how little energy you have. All that matters is the action. All that matters is doing it. So take your feelings out of the equation. Don't think about it and just do what needs to be done. You have to. If you're going to let your brain get in the way of making progress, of seeing success, of getting your art to where it is you always wanted it to be, then you're doing yourself a disservice. You're just... You're just delaying something to the point where it may not actually be inevitable if, if you don't start making a move, if you don't start getting real. <laughs> so, yeah, avoid procrastination at all costs. It's just a massive time waster, man. I can't tell you, and again, I, I feel like a hypocrite saying that, but I, I say it because I know how much time I've wasted on social media doing things that had no outcome, no point, just a complete and utter waste of time when I could have been sitting there drawing, when I could have had art to show for the time that I was investing. <laughs> hey, Dan, how you doing? It's great to see you here, Mr. Lawless. Best little comic in the world, a finished one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Hockey says he's a pro procrastinator. That's no good at all. Okay. Blue Jay, almost 1 a.m. here. Got to get some sleep for a day of progress. Thanks for the advice, Clayton. You are welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really hope that everybody watching right now is getting a ton of value out of this. If you are, let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Ring that bell for notifications. Share this out on your social media. Tell people that it's happening. Okay? Don't just keep this all for yourself. Sharing is caring. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because I want to do a ton of these. I want to keep on doing them. we got a friend here from Brazil, Renato. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm rambling a lot, Corey, of course. It's what I do. Show me some proof of how good an artist you can make us. Corey, you are the proof. My friend, you would not be drawing at the level you're drawing right now without me. Do you not remember that female torsos lesson I did with you real time, live, and how that changed your female characters from that point onward? Do you not remember? 
Corey's always begging me to do more lessons with him. But I say, man, you know, you got to be, you got to be like the rest of them. You know, you got to jump into these workshops. Can't just keep handing you out freebies because you're my brother. You won't appreciate it otherwise. You'll give me comments like this, completely forgetting who brought him up. All right. Dan Lawless. Even being a professional artist for 37 years, including Marvel and DC, I still learned a few things from our working relationship. Go Clayton. Thank you so much, Dan. Really appreciate that. Dan, by the way, if you don't already know, he's an incredibly talented comic book artist in his own right with years, decades of experience. Highly suggest that you check him out. He's on Twitter. You can find him on Facebook and all other avenues of social media as well. Check his stuff out. If you're into uh, fantasy comic books like Conan the Barbarian, then you're going to love what his art has to offer. You're going to love his gift to the world. <laughs> the art and times of J. Ryan hand holding. I need this. Yeah, everybody does. Uh, there's a reason that uh, the people I mentor keep on booking more sessions. It's because they're getting value out of this stuff. It's because they uh, they appreciate the direction and the feedback, and that it's actually helping them. I'm gonna feel the same way after this workshop. I promise you. Hey, how you doing? Uh, it, it is being recorded. Yeah, that's why you can see it. <laughs> oh, because I'm not communicating with the chat, right? I see. All right, so it looks like we have got some uh, questions up here. Oh, okay, so let's talk about AI for a second. So Corey Barton says, could you teach me how to draw better than AI? So uh, this is really interesting, right? Um, what you're going to find is that there's a, a lot of things coming up real soon within the entertainment industry, creativity as a whole, music, art, movies, animation, everything. There's going to have a ton of AI-generated content, and it's going to look good. It's going to be great. But what most people aren't realizing is that it's never been about the end product. Okay, you can have an amazing, you could have you could have drawn the most amazing thing by hand traditionally. And if nobody knows about you, if nobody knows who the heck you are, they're not gonna find it. Same thing with the AI art. Okay, unless you somehow become famous for your AI art, it's gonna be very difficult for you to sell it. Uh, now you can't claim copyright on AI art either. So any designs you come up with that are based on AI art, they can be claimed by anybody. Anybody can use them. Okay, so there's no large studio out there that's going to want to hire an AI artist since well, anyone could use their characters and could make money off their characters. So that's the first thing to consider. But beyond that, if you just look around, look at the landscape right now on the internet, there's an abundance of information. There's so many artists out there on the internet. You might wonder, well, how can I, how can I compete with this? Well, you make a YouTube channel, just like howtodrawcomics.net, and you start making a name for yourself. You get out there in front of people. You start building a brand. And when you build that brand around you, people buy your stuff because of you, you're the product. That's what nobody is understanding. You're the product. You come first. And then whatever it is you're trying to sell. But if you haven't cultivated a relationship, if nobody knows who you are, you haven't built trust, then, I mean, the, the chances of you being able to be successful as a creator are very, very slim. You, you, need, an, you need to cultivate an audience. And the the, whatever it is you're making, AI art, traditional art, whatever it is, that's not enough to create an audience. So for those of you who are worried about AI art, keep doing what it is you're doing. 
You could be drawing stick men. And if your name is Mr. Beast and you're trying to sell a stick man on a t-shirt, you're probably going to make a heck of a lot of money, <laughs> okay? You're all good. Keep drawing. Keep learning this stuff. It's worth it. And I'll tell you why. People are going to get real lazy with this next AI generation, okay? People are going to think that they can depend on the AI to do it all for them. And a lot of these skills, skills like you're going to be learning in the, ha in the character creator workshop are going to be lost to time. There's going to be very few people teaching it. There's going to be even fewer people left who can execute it because they're going to fall into the trap of believing that, oh, well, you know, I may as well not learn this stuff because AI art is taking over. But you know what's going to happen? There's going to be so much AI art around that anybody can do that is going to have a minuscule amount of value to the point where it wouldn't even be worth the effort to try and make profit from it. However, those out there who can actually still use the specialized skill of drawing traditionally, who knows how to execute it, uh, well, w w there's going to be very few of it first, so it's going to be extremely limited. It's going to be difficult to do, difficult to produce. What does that mean? Price is going to go up, becomes more valuable. That's why gold is expensive, because it's rare. There's not an abundance of it. I go deep. That's right. I am a talking head today. Corey says, I know Clayton can draw pro looking chicks. Yeah, that's right. Man, you know, you're hilarious. Yeah, I do. Hit the link in the description below, Corey. You'll see. I'll get it up for you right now. Check this out. This is the create the character creator workshop. If you click on the link in the description below, this is where it's going to take you. Right here. There you have it. Character creator workshop. Boom. Want to see the kind of create the kind of characters that I'm going to show you how to create? Here's one of them right here. His name's Deagle. He was for an actual comic book that I was working on. Uh, sci-fi, action, epic. Designed in multiple viewpoints. You know why I can do that? Because it's exactly what I used to teach at multiple universities around Melbourne and Australia. And then I started doing it for a whole bunch of clients on different comic book projects, game projects, etc. Here's another one right here. Her name is Ricocheted. Beautiful character. Really, really love this character. There's lots of information here that you can read about. Some of the key things that uh, a lot of people coming into character design for the first time, character illustration, just do not realize they've, uh, you know, it's they're missing a really big chunk of what it takes to be a brilliant character artist. And uh, that big chunk. The reason that they're missing it is because it's just not taught in the mainstream. It's just not something that you can find in books and courses. And if you can, it's covered very briefly. Okay, feedback, that's the one thing that's going to boost you. And then here is uh, what we're going to be covering each day in the Character Creator Workshop. On day one, we'll cover the basics, character construction, proportions, anatomy, and posing so that you've got all the tools you need to reinforce your characters with a sturdy foundation. Then I'll show you how to provoke your creativity to spawn a selection of unique and interesting ideas for your characters. 
you'll discover the key role, silhouette, shape, and design architecture play. Design architecture is such an important one in conjuring up a memorable concept. And from there, we'll create a collection of thumbnail sketches. So that's what you're actually going to create, thumbnail sketches. You're going to have a whole sheet of them that you'll take with you into the next session. Day two creation with a solid grip on the fundamentals and your kick-ass character idea now in hand, I'll take you step-by-step step through the very same workflow I use to illustrate characters on a daily basis. And that's no joke. This is literally the process I use and I use it because it's consistent. It gives me good results each and every time. And every time I detour away from it, I run off track. Okay, so this is the best possible character creation model that I can give you, that I can pass on to you, that if you practice it, it's going to, well, I mean, you're still, it's still not going to be easy. Drawing is never easy, but it is going to give you the best chance of success beyond any other method that I can think of. You build your character with a solid foundation, providing them with a striking pose that exudes personality and liveliness. Very important, as we mentioned. Then we'll overlay the anatomy on top, positioning, sizing, and scaling each muscle group to the desired proportions of your character. And then comes the finishing touches. Slick, sharp, and streamlined contours carefully weighted to describe your character with vivid shape. We'll discuss lighting, rendering, and style. Then add the finished polish to achieve a professional finish. And here's day three. This is the most important one. This is uh, a real uh, critique session that uh, I did with one of my wonderful students. His name is Dominic, and uh, he's someone who I've done many, many mentoring sessions with. But this is what it's going to look like. You're gonna, I'm going to go over your character with a fine-tooth comb, figure out exactly what's working about it, what's not working about it, and giving you suggestions, advice, and guidance on what you can do moving forward to enhance your characters far and beyond where they're at, no matter what level you believe you are. Okay, from beginner to advanced, I'm going to give you, that's the thing, not every artist is the same. Each artist is going to require individualized, unique feedback in order to progress forward. Okay, I can't give a beginner the same advice that I would give someone who's more advanced and vice versa. And it might not even be a matter of different levels. It could just be wherever it is you're at. Within your comic, within your character creating journey. So day three is dedicated to you answering your questions, solving your challenges and obstacles, giving you the feedback, advice and direction you need to take your characters to the next level. This includes drawovers and examples, so you can see the precise ways in which your characters can be improved. This talks about how, uh, and this is um, something else that I haven't actually brought up yet. Uh, which is pretty important. This is a group learning environment. Now, the really cool thing about that, you'll see that there's nine other students that's going to be with you in the character creation workshop when you book into it. And the brilliant thing about that is you get to essentially times the amount of learning that you're taking in by 10 because you're learning through those other students and you're learning from me. And you're also learning for yourself. Okay, that's 10 times the learning power. Okay, that's 10 times more learning power than you would be able to have if you were just going it on your own. Just think about how much progress that allows you to make. You're also held accountable. That's the other thing. In this workshop, when you book into it, for starters, you're going to be making an upfront investment. So that's enough to make you feel compelled to turn up to this thing. But even beyond that, you're going to have me there live and in person. You're going to have your other, your other peers in the same class live and in person. You're all going to be there for the same reason. And so you're going to turn up to this thing, okay? And unless some crazy event happens that causes you not to be able to make it, and all these sessions are recorded, so you get to keep them, so it wouldn't matter anyway. But the point is, is that, this holds you accountable. You're going to be sitting through every single minute of this workshop and you're going to be completely engaged. How many courses can you say that for that you've done before? Have you watched them minute to minute? 
paid complete attention? Have you done the exercises real time while you're watching the demonstrations? Maybe some of you have. I certainly don't. I watch about five minutes of a course and then I'm bored of it and I'm done. Even courses by really amazing artists, you know, especially these days. Again, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things pulling our attention away. But while you're sitting in this workshop with me and these nine other motivated students, I guess it'd be eight, unless you're including yourself, um, you're going to be not distracted by anything else. You're going to be there. You're going to be present. And you're going to be executing this stuff. And I'll be helping you to do it. Pretty freaking awesome. Okay, again, that's not... There's not something that you can get from a course. It's not something you can get from a book. It's not something you can get from a YouTube video. It's something that's really only available in a learning program such as this. Um, so here's the other thing as well. You're also going to get access to the How to Draw Comics Inner Circle. Okay, That's a private Facebook group. Now, within this Facebook group, there already resides a uh, Ah, oh, sorry. There's there's only seven spots now. Um, last time I checked, anyway, that was this morning. Um, so you know those spots are going. I can't promise you that they'll last till the end of the day. I, I really don't know. There are times when these workshops sell out within just a matter of hours after being launched. Um, I mean, all the spots could be could be gone by now. I don't know. You might have to you might have to try and book in. Uh, so, it, well, what was I saying? So, you can, you'll get an invitation, a personal invitation from me to join the Inner Circle How to Draw Comics group on Facebook. And the cool thing about it is there's actually a, a bunch of motivated students in there already, uh, people who are really serious about upgrading their skill set, improving, constantly evolving their abilities. And they're super engaged. They're there to improve. They're not mucking around. They're giving you feedback. And ideally, you're giving feedback to them. And I'm also in the group. So is Ed Foychuk. And we're both giving you advice, giving you tips, giving you feedback and guidance on what it is you can do with each piece of work to improve upon it or do better next time. The other thing is, is that we also, Ed and I, we often do Q&As within this group. And we also do just random live training sessions. It could be on anything. It could be on sequential storytelling. I don't believe you are in that group, Hockey. We've only offered the How to Draw Comics in a Circle invitation to people who have invested in the How to Draw Comics Omnibus, Ultra Omnibus. And so this is the second time that we're making it available. So it's an exclusive group. Okay, it's and the reason that we've made it so exclusive is one, so that we can focus on each person within the group, give them the help that they need, and two, because we want the people who are there to be serious. We want them to be serious about upping their skill set. And so we know when they jump into a program like this that, hey, the proof is in the pudding. They're ready to do what it takes to get their skills to the level that they need to be at. They're there for real. They're, they're not mucking about. So that's why we offer, we extend this offer to join the How to Draw Comics Inner Circle to people just like that because we know that they're going to get value out of it. But we know that they're going to succeed because they'll take what it is we're giving them and actually put it into action. Okay, so uh, next up, what else have we got here? Oh, yeah, here's the other thing that I haven't told you about. This is crazy. Um, so you'll actually get the character creator workshop for half price when you book today. Okay, so that's a 50% discount. Uh, when uh, this launches again in the future, it'll be twice as much. That's the first thing you should, that, that's, that's another thing, really important thing you should know. But you also get, uh, when you jump in for 50% off, uh, you also get these three bonuses. And I've strategically picked these three bonuses for a reason. Uh, the key reason is because I feel like they're really good complementary to the character creator workshop. 
So you've got figure drawing fundamentals proportion. It's going to give you all the references you could ever ask for and all the training you need on drawing your characters to the correct proportions. Although in the Character Creator Workshop, I'm actually updating my teachings on proportions because they have changed somewhat. Next up, we've got Character Creator Superhero. And again, another great reference, an inside look into my character creating workflow. But you don't just get to see how this is how these characters are constructed. You get three examples of uh, three different female characters here. But you don't just see how they're constructed, how their anatomy is layered in on top of a beautifully proportioned figure. And you don't just see how the drawing is polished up. But you'll also, uh, what I'll also be revealing is my process for inking and coloring three complete female comic book character concepts. So you really get the full package with this one. And you're going to have it free when you jump into the Character Creator Workshop today. Next up, we've got the Inner Circle Invite, which I've already mentioned. And, uh, and yeah, the thing is, is that you do want to jump into this if it's something you're considering at all, because... Uh, if you miss out on it, I'm not sure, again, whether or not I'm going to run this workshop. Uh, I mean, I will probably run it again if it goes well, but I'm not entirely sure when it'll run. Like I said, there's other workshops that I've got planned. So um, if this is something, an area that you know you could be better in, snap up this opportunity now. There's not a better time, Okay. Don't put it off till tomorrow. You've done that enough. Okay, now is the time to jump on this, get in there, and start seeing massive improvement. And, uh, oh, the other thing is, is that you get a risk-free money-back guarantee. So if you hate the workshop, if I don't deliver on what it is I'm promising here today, then I'm just going to give you money back if you ask me. Okay, so if you email me and you say, Clayton, I'd like a refund on this. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to give you the refund. So the worst thing that can happen here is you get a free experience in the Character Creator Workshop. That is the worst possible thing that could happen to you when you jump in and, and book your spot in the Character Creator Workshop. I'll happily refund you. If I haven't delivered on what's promised, if you're not satisfied, I don't want to keep your money. Okay, so that's the worst thing that can happen. It's completely risk-free. I'm taking on all the risk for you here so that you've got no excuses. If this is something that you want, you can have it. Sweet. And then we've got a bunch of commonly asked questions down the bottom there that you can look through for yourself. So uh, as you can see, I've really tried to create a great offer here that I think uh, will be useful to many of you out there. You know, one of the questions that we ask the people who join our How to Draw Comics Facebook group, the main Facebook group, before we give them membership, before we accept them in, is what challenges is it that they're facing? And so often we see issues with anatomy, proportions, the fundamentals. It's all related to drawing characters. And so that's why I decided to make the character creation workshop the next workshop that I release and, and why I believe it's going to be super valuable to many of you out there. Hockey says, most likely I wouldn't contribute anything to the group anyway. Oh, I'm sure you could, Hockey. And uh, I know you'd definitely get something out of it. You are capable only to the extent of what you think your limitations are. Okay, so if, if you're limiting yourself needlessly, then you're only going to be able to get to that point and never beyond. So you've got to, you've got to believe in yourself a little bit, Hockey. You've got, you've got tons to offer, I promise you.
you should you should post more hockey again a lot of what i'm talking about here you never know uh what kind of feedback you're going to get on your stuff and if it's valuable to you if you can use it to get better it's it's just something that that you got to do i mean how do you know whether or not you're making progress how do you know what level of ability you have if you if you've only got yourself there to judge it you might be thinking that you completely suck that you're just no good as an artist when in reality objectively speaking people loved your work people thought it was great Polisart says, by the way, would love more process videos by you, Clayton. And yes. Um, oh, how to draw com <laughs> You're talking to Dan Lawless there. Okay, cool. Whoops. How to draw comics. I keep thinking that's me. Dan Lillis says, never underestimate the advancing power of fellow comic art students. I feed off my relationships with my comic book pros. I did at, I did so at every level, for sure. No doubt about it. It's absolutely invaluable. <laughs> Thanks. I'm I'm going to be putting out more. Don't worry. I can promise you that. Hockey says, I know from being in a bunch of other exclusive Facebook groups, I never post. I I know that you know that, but let's let's make a shift, Hockey. I think that um, you know, you have access to the How to Draw Comics Facebook group. Start posting there, see what happens. Get your stuff out there a little bit. Like I said, it's all about personal brand these days. If you want to be a successful art, a successful artist that makes money, if you're a no-name nobody, it doesn't matter how good you get at drawing. If you can't market yourself or you can't pay someone to market you for you, then unfortunately, it's not going to happen. So almost make it as important as getting good at drawing to establish yourself in front of an audience to start cultivating one because that's what's going to allow you to make a living doing what it is you love the audience is power people who know who you are who love what it is you do who find that they have things in common with you who are able to relate with you absolute key i'll tell you i'll tell that to every single artist out there right now start creating an audience for yourself without it you'll be stuck in the mud you'll be sitting there drawing amazing stuff wondering why nobody's noticing especially with all this ai art that's going to be coming out now the, the other thing about ai art is by the way that i've personally observed uh it, it lacks that uh that human grit it's there is a certain amount of perfection to it that takes away character the character that you would otherwise see in human created art and i kind of miss that it's it's almost like um going into a vintage second hand store the experience of that and finding this old comic book that might not have been drawn that well but it's just the the smell of it the experience of it and the the mystery of it that absolutely encapsulates you i really like that about comics I, I i just like the uh the groundedness of artwork that was created by a human hand the journey that it went upon and i think that it comes through in the end i truly do ai art looks amazing make no mistake don't don't make up excuses as to why ai art is going to fail it, it's going to succeed and it's going to be very very good but objectively speaking, okay, I'm not trying, I'm not, I, I've got a dog in this fight, obviously, because I want to keep on doing what I'm doing. 
for for a very long time. Um, but I truly do believe, regardless of that, uh, human art will still be the prized thing that people pay money for. Okay, people aren't going to want to leave that behind. And I'm talking about consumers. Of course, artists are always going to enjoy creating it. We we have to. We're, we're empty without our ability to express on a creative level. But as I said, I think that in the end, um, we're going to come out victorious. It's AI art will always be there. And it's going to help a lot of people. It's going to push a lot of productions forward. I'm excited to see what people are able to create with that tool. Absolutely, a hundred percent. It's going to just blow open the potential for creativity to an extreme level. I mean, just as a traditional artist, I can think of the ways in which you might use AI art as a more unique and interesting reference point for your traditionally created art. But, you know, that's just one example. Who knows? It's it's unfathomable as to where it's going to end up and how it's going to affect us. But I don't think that human created stuff is going extinct anytime soon. I don't think it ever will. It's innate within us. We need it. And um, it, it's kind of amazing, actually, that the thing that AI really started to excel at, the first thing was creating stuff. Now, you could say creating code, but then it started creating art. It started creating music. And so this innate ability that humans have, this should tell us that it's something special, okay? The fact that AI became capable of that first and how utilized it is, how scared people are of it, should give you a hint toward the valuable ability that we have to produce things as human beings. Understand that, especially if you know, you're a cog in the machine If you're somebody who goes to, you know, a warehouse job, for example, I know many people have to, or sits in a call center, just answering phones, know that you have a creative depth within you that is so much more valuable than that. And it's worth exploring. It's worth going home after that day job and, and utilizing if that remains untapped, I, I truly believe you just feel empty inside. I don't feel like you can be a full human being if you don't have some outlet of expression, whether it's in writing, making movies, making comic books, drawing illustrations, or heck, just even having a diary that you write in. We need that as human beings. And guess what? It's one of the most valuable commodities that we've got to offer. That's why people make so much money off of it. Oh, hey, we've got Crazy Mad in the chat. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Good to see you here. Oh, and Fantas Magorical, how are you? So wonderful to have you here to see your face. Thank you for joining us today for this stream. Got American Comics Co. in the house. How you doing? Thanks for being here. All right, how long have we been we been going for? Um, yeah, about an hour and a half. Cool. It's usually how long I go for, how much staying power I have for this stuff. But uh, just to recap on a lot of the things that I've gone over here today, because I think it it bears a cohesive uh, overview of what it is uh, you need to take with you going forward. I don't want you to just leave this stream today doing nothing with your character art. I actually want you to utilize what I've mentioned. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Here are the key things that I want to, I want 
to imagine you're implementing into your characters right after this stream, the very next character that you draw. I want to imagine that you're incorporating way more expression into your characters than you have been up until this point. We want to see their personality, their temperament, how they're feeling, what they're thinking, who they are coming through in their body language, the way in which they're holding themselves. Are they confident? Are they unconfident? Are they full of joy? Are they a villain? Are they a hero? Can I see it just in the way in which they're holding themselves? Haven't you ever been walking down the street and you recognize somebody you know just because of the way that they move, right? I mean, a crowd of people, you know, maybe you're standing behind them on some, or something and you don't immediately recognize them from their face, but it's just in the way in which they're moving their body, their stride, their stance, whatever it is, their posture, okay? So when I say that stance, posture, stride, ask yourself, what kind of stance, posture, stride does my character have? When they're just standing there, do they hold their head straight? Do they look forward? Are they hunched over? Are they slouched? Do they have a straight back? Is their chest out? You know, a lot of us draw superheroes and, uh, and protagonists that are strong and powerful, but how do we create variation amid those characteristics? How do we set our strong characters apart from other strong characters that are out there, the sea of other heroes that you'll come across in the comic book world? Okay, think about what makes your character unique, not just in the way that they look. Okay, that's just the paint, all right? That's just the icing on the cake. But if every cake is shaped the same, it really... Sure, the icing is going to set it apart to a certain extent, but not as dramatically as if you consider all of these other components that I've mentioned to you today. What kind of facial expression does your character have? Okay, do they when when their face is just resting? Have they got a scowl? Have they got a glare? Are their eyebrows raised? Are they lowered? Are they smiling? Are they smirking? Are they sad? Here's the other thing, the physical attributes of your characters. Are they skinny? Are they built? Are they fat? This tells us a lot about who that character is, what they enjoy doing, how they think about themselves. Do they have messy hair? Do they have well-kept hair? Tells us something about the character. How do they dress? Do they dress sharp? Do they dress like a slob? They dress somewhere in between. Are they dressed as a soldier? Are they dressed as a civilian? Do they wear tights? Do they wear a suit? Do they wear a gown? Do they wear a leather jacket? These are all things that tell us a lot about who your character is. This is Character Design 101, the precise things I used to impart onto my students back in the classroom. This is why people pay me to design their comic book characters and characters for video games for that matter, because of these considerations that I make. And so if you want to get hired to design characters, to work on projects, or if you simply want to create your own comic books, comic books that sell, because you're always making this stuff for somebody, somebody who wants it, and just making it for yourself, then implement this stuff. And it's going to create a massive impact in the quality, the perceived quality of your characters. It's going to enhance their visual representation beyond anything you could have imagined. Okay, this is stuff that so many people underestimate. And so you only have to do it a little bit in order to stand out. So that's body language, facial expressions. Keep it in mind. Jot it down. Start incorporating it today. Next up, what have we got? Um, I know feedback was one of them. Feedback is a really, really important one. Okay, how are you going to get feedback? Well, you can jump into the character creation workshop and I'll give it to you. I'll spend an entire day giving it to you. And 
an allotted hour at the end of every session we do over the three days in which it unfolds. But if you decide that it's not for you and you'd like to get that feedback somewhere else, get a mentor. Okay, we often we I offer mentoring on how to draw comics.net too. But you can also jump online and reach out to pro comic book artists who are doing the kind of art that you'd like to do as well and just ask them for some tips. Ask them to look over your work and see what they have to say. That might not be in depth as what's being offered in the character creation workshop or in a mentoring session, but still it's going to be valuable and you're going to be able to use that information to push yourself forward. You need that individualized guidance, that feedback that's tailored to you and just you. That broad brush stuff, it's great for generically made characters, but in terms of how you're going to proceed and what's going to make the, the most significant difference in how fast you progress moving forward, it's all going to come down to individualized feedback. Okay. I mean, don't you feel lost sometimes? That's what this individualized feedback is all about. That's what a, having a comic art coach is supposed to solve. It's supposed to help you not feel lost anymore and give you clarity on exactly what you need to do to find your way out of the woods. Now, what was the final thing? Let me, let me read back here. Oh, the other important thing. See, my memory is so shot. I don't know why. Too much social media. It's giving me brain damage. So the other thing that you need to consider when it comes to drawing characters is being a complete warrior, brave in the face of mistakes. Not only would I say be prepared to make them, I would encourage you to make them because there's a very high likelihood that if you've developed your eye to be able to spot them and to come up with solutions to solve them, it's going to lead you to a better outcome. So, okay, so there's multiple components to using mistakes to your advantage. One, you've got to make them. Two, you've got to notice them. And three, you've actually got to be able to solve them so that you end up on a better trajectory than you would have been on if you never made them in the first place. People who avoid making mistakes who are too careful in the beginning, yield generic, unimpressive, mediocre results. Perfection is boring. Perfection is like every other thing that's perfect. But if you can make it look good by doing your own thing, and you can go through a process of exploration, sculpting that idea out on a level that's more and more vivid, more and more to the vision that you have for this character on a deep and subconscious level, what's in getting what's inside here, the epic idea you've got inside your head, and then presenting it on the page in its full glory. That's what this is about. Okay, it's not about drawing a perfectly proportioned character with great looking anatomy. Anyone can learn how to do that. Anyone can know where all the muscles sit. But in the end, what's going to separate you is your ideas, your creativity, and your bravery in the face of making mistakes, being unfazed, being excited when you make a mistake because you know that that mistake is going to lead you even closer to the ideal outcome. Okay, so the three things making mistakes, using them to your advantage, adding more expression into your characters, and getting the individualized, tailored feedback that you need to make serious progress within your art. You're going to get all of those things and much, much more in the Character Creator Workshop, which I've got a link to in the description below. Click it right now if this sounds interesting at all to you if it's something that you feel like you might get some value out of if you're serious about improving your abilities as a character artist if drawing comics is a real passion of yours 
if this means something to you, do yourself a favor, do yourself a service, click the link and at least check out the Character Creator Workshop. And if you decide to jump in, I really look forward to working alongside you, drawing kick-ass, memorable-looking characters that leave an impression with you. All right, that's it for today. I look forward to our next How to Draw Comics live stream together. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're watching this after the fact, please leave your thoughts and comments in the description. I will ask one more time the wonderful chat who is tuning in right now hit that like button press subscribe and and actually leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section of the video as well because it's going to help more people to see it more people to get this knowledge to utilize it to their advantage and who doesn't want a world with more brilliant comic book artists okay that's what this is all about Let's share the knowledge. Let's share the love. And uh, remember to tell as if you feel like you've got, if you can think of an artist right now, a friend of yours that would get some value out of this video, share it with them. Send it to them in a, in a message, okay? Link them. Because I truly believe in the stuff that I've told you today. And I know that if you use it, it's going to make a, it's going to make a big difference. As I said, this is, these are the things that are missing from so many of the artists that I mentor and even the professional artists that I'm working with on actual comic book projects where I've been pulled on to actually do editing, to take a look at their work, go through it with a fine tooth comb and see the areas for improvement. It's always got to do with expression. Okay. Have a think about it. This is some seriously important stuff. And there's a good chance that you're not taking full advantage of it already. So once more, I hope that you've enjoyed the live stream here today. And I will bid you farewell for now. <laughs> Cherish the times we had. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for being here with me for today. Thanks so much for being here with me today. I had a very late night streaming as well. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun chilling out with you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next stream. Until then, take care. Keep on drawing. Keep on creating. Don't let the inspiration stop. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.